Okay, 6.7 now is what we are on, and that is using the fundamental theorem of algebra. So, let's take a look here. I'm ending with a 2, so in order to factor this, just like we did before, finding all the zeros, it's a 2. So you either have a 1 or a 2, okay? And on the bottom, it is a 6. So it's a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6. So what that means is I either have a 1 over 1, a 2 over 1. I have a 1 over 2, or a 2 over 2. I have a 1 over 3, or a 2 over 3, and I have a 1 over 6, or a 2 over 6. Okay, so let's start crossing stuff out. I got 1, I got 2, I got a half. 2 over 2 is 1, so that's gone. I got a third, I got 2 thirds, I got 1 sixth. Well, that reduces to 1 third, so that's gone. So here's what I have to work with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and remember it's times 2. So that just means I have even more to work with. So let's start with the whole numbers first. I'm going to start with 1 and 2 and see if I get lucky. So I write this down. I got a 6, negative 7, negative 4, 7, negative 2. And I'm going to start with 1 first. So I bring down a 6. Um, 6 times 1 is 6. I end up getting negative 1. Multiply those to get negative 1. Add them together to get negative 5. Uh, multiply those together to get negative 5. Add them together to get 2. Multiply those to get 2. I get 0. And my goodness, I luck out first try. So what does that mean? That means this is 6x's cubed. Minus 1x squared. Minus 5x and plus 2. That's what that means. So let's see. 6, negative 1, negative 5, 2. 6, negative 1, negative 5, 2. So you get 6, negative 1, negative 5, 2. So I plugged in a 1, and I know a 1 works. OK. So, so far, I know a 1 works. Excellent. We'll come back to that. Um, let's keep going. Now that I have this down this far, let's try negative 1. OK, I already know 1 works, so let's try negative 1. Bring down the 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Add that together, negative 7. I get positive 7. I multiply those, add them together, get 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Well, my goodness, that one worked as well. That gives me x squared, x, and 2. And I just said that negative 1 works as well. So works again on the second try. So I end up with 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. So 6x squared, 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 works. All right. And I said that both ones work, positive and negative, which means we're going to have a positive and negative 1 here. So this is what I have so far. This is what I need to do, though. I need to factor this. I can take out of this nothing out of all of them. So there's nothing else I can do. But what I can do is I can slide and divide this one, right? So I can rewrite this as x squared minus 7x plus 12. OK, since I have that 12 there. Uh, now, can you think of two numbers that multiply to give me 12, um, that also add to give me negative 7? I can, negative 3 and negative 4. So I can change this into x minus 3 and x minus 4. However, because I slid a 6, that means I need to now divide every 1 by 6. So really, I end up with x minus a half, because that simplifies to a half. And I end up with x minus 2 thirds. So because 4 over 6 simplifies to 2 thirds. So let's see what we have now. Uh, minus a half minus 2 thirds. So let's see here. Minus a half and minus two-thirds. And remember, I had the x minus 1, and I had the x plus 1. I told you in the last examples that whenever you have a fraction and it's simplified, just move it out in front. So really, that's like saying 2x minus 1 
And right here we have another fraction, so that's like saying over here 3x minus 2, and I still have my x minus 1, and I still have my x plus 1, and there are all my factors. Okay, let's take a look at one more here quick. Um, when I get one like this, I have a 6, which is a 1, 2, a 3, and a 6 on top, right? And a 15 on the bottom, which is a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 15. So remember, it's plus or minus all of these. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I wrote these all out, and I've been writing them all out, so I'm just going to start with the simple ones. 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, and 6 divided by 1. So if I need to come back to this, I will. So we have 15, then a 1, then a negative 21, then a negative 1, then a 6. I am going to start with positive 1 again. So I bring down a 15. 15 times 1 is 15. I add them together to get 16. 16 times 1 is 16. I add them together to get negative 5. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. I add them together to get negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. I don't either get zero. So that worked. Luckily enough, again, one worked. So I have a one as my answer. So far, so good. So let me quickly erase this crap and start again. So I tried out one, and that worked. And now I don't remember what I had underneath. Probably should not have done that. OK. Um, one worked. So, I guess I can, let me uh, go back through here quick. Um, I have, what, 15, so that was 16, right? 16, that's negative 5, that's negative 5, which is negative 6 and 0. So, um, now I can work with these right here. Okay, 15, 16, negative 5, negative 6. So now, let's try out a negative 1. So I bring a 15 down. 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. I add these two. 16 plus negative 15 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 6. Add them to get negative 6. Negative 6 times 1, positive 6. Add those together to get 0 as well, so I know that negative 1 also works. All right, so the reason why I'm stopping here is because this was cubed. Now it's, remember, 15x to the fourth. Then the next row is 15x cubed, x squared, x. Well, this is x cubed. Now this is x squared. So now I actually have 15x squared plus x minus 6. So 15x squared plus x minus 6. 15x squared plus x minus 6. And once again, to our luck and dismay, x minus 1 worked, and so did x plus 1. They both worked. OK. Now i got to try to factor this. So uh, they don't all have something in common, but I can slide and divide. All right, so 15 and negative 6, so it's 0, so it's negative 90. So x squared plus x minus 90. I'm looking for something that factors that'll work. Um, well, I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 90 that add to give you a 1, right? And what comes to mind is 10 and negative 9. So I can factor that into x plus 10 and x minus 9. But because I slid by 15, I have to now divide. That's why it's called slide and divide. Now I need to divide by 15. Which means I now have x. When I simplify that, I can take a 5 out of both of those, which gives me um, 2 over 3 when I take a 5 out. And I have x minus. I can take a 3 out of both of those, and that gives me 3 over 5. So I end up with, let's see here, positive 2 thirds positive two-thirds and negative three-fifths. So let's remember that. Positive two-thirds with an x there when it was simplified. Uh, negative three-fifths. 
And remember, the first two worked, so I still have x minus 1, and I have x plus 1. Still have those. And remember, like before, you can't have that fraction, so we're going to rewrite that as 3x plus 2. So there's that factor. And that's 5, so I can write that out in front and get 5x minus 3. I still have the x minus 1, and I still have the x plus 1. So there are some more factored out for you, so all the zeros found. Um, if you have any more questions on finding zeros, now that was about the sixth different problem I've done, so I hope that that helps. If not, uh, I guess I will be of absolutely no help to you.